This is a case of false blame to explain tragedy. It is a case in which undisputed facts will be confronted by highly disputed opinions. The facts, as facts sometimes are, will be sad. They may literally break our hearts, as sad facts sometimes do. But they will be facts. And facts, unlike opinions, do not vary. Facts, unlike opinions, do not change. Facts, unlike opinions, can never be wrong or, or for that matter, right, for they are facts. And facts, unlike opinions, are unchanging for all time. It is a fact that an infant named Xavier Delgado suffered from bleeding within his brain long before he ever came into the care of Patty Mott. It is a tremendously sad fact that bleeding within his brain ultimately took his young life. And it is a fact that Patty Mock did not cause the bleeding in Xavier's brain, which began several months before he ever came into her care. My name is James Norris, and together with my co-counsel, Matthew Klein, it's my great honor this morning to be standing before you representing Patty Mock. An indictment is nothing more than an accusation. It, it's an accusation. It, it puts Patty on notice that she's been accused of something. And in this case, she's been accused of something big. She's been accused of first-degree murder. So the indictment is not evidence of anything. It, it just sets forth the accusations the government has chosen to make. Now, you, you, you heard Mr. Liston tell you something in his opening statement. He said, uh, Dr. Bloom will tell you that there was blunt force trauma. And then later he told you that, that Dr. Glick will tell you that this was a case of a shaken baby. I think it's important to review the different accusations that have been made by the state in the indictment. The indictment, the charging instrument, the accusation filed against Patty Mott is divided into five counts. So I'd like to review with you those counts. Count one accuses that on September 24, 2009, Knowing that her ex would kill Xavier Delgado, she caused abusive head trauma to him and caused his death. Count two accuses that on September 24, 2009, knowing that her ex would kill Xavier Delgado, she shook him and caused his death. Count three accuses that on September 24, 2009, knowing that her ex created a strong probability of death, or great bodily harm to Xavier Delgado, she caused abusive head trauma to him. Count four alleges she shook him. Count five alleges she caused his head to impact upon an object and thereby caused his death. Three different theories advanced in a five count accusation filed by our government. Abusive head trauma, shook him, caused his head to impact upon an object. That's what she's accused of, and I think it's important to observe at the outset what it is that she's accused of. And in this case, three different dissimilar theories. You will hear a description by Dr. Nelson and by Dr. Barnes that the April 21, 2009 CT scan showed evidence of a subdural hematoma. They will tell you that the April 21, 2009 CT scan showed that the baby had a subdural hematoma that on April 21st, 2009, was at least six weeks in age. Dr. Nelson will use these very words. No question about it. The government that has accused Patty Mock of blunt force trauma to a baby's head, the government that has accused Patty Mock of causing the head of the baby to strike an object will not refute Dr. Nelson's testimony that when he reviewed the September 24, 2009 CT scan, he looked for something he calls markers of impact injury. Specifically, he looked for scalp swelling, and he found none. He looked for skull fractures, and he found none. The doctors will tell you that there was, in fact, no evidence on the September 24, 2009 CT scan that supports the proposition that this was blunt force trauma. 
During this trial, there will not be a single witness who will claim to have seen Petty abuse Xavier. Not one single witness. Not one single bruise. With the greatest sadness, we expect the evidence to show that on September 29, 2009, an adorable little baby boy passed away as a result of complications from a subdural hematoma. Certainly, during this trial, you will hear a wide-ranging assortment of much different opinions as to why that happened. And during this trial, you will also hear facts. Facts that do not vary. Facts that do not change. It is the story of an adorable baby boy. It is the story of a loving grandmother and babysitter. It is the story of how the world changed for each of them long before they ever met.